You know, even something as mediocre as this crap can be good when played with a proper joystick. This is the uh, JB King for the Super Famicom. Let's take a look at it. This is a beauty. Now, unlike many joysticks for old consoles, this one has a fully micro switched stick. Just listen to that. Lovely and clicky, isn't it? And the best thing is the travel on it is really, really short, so it's great for fighting games. You only have to give it the m most minute input, you know, to get your moves out. There's no long travel on it, which is great for fighting games and especially great for shooters. Another excellent feature on it, which is also featured on a, a PC Engine joystick, which uh, I think Hori made that. Oh no, Mycomsoft made it. The same people behind the um, XRGB sticks. This actual stick is made by. Um, it made by, oh yeah, Halakin, believe it or not, the same people behind Kirby games. And that awful Final Zone. No Final Zone, Hyper Zone. Anyway, another cool feature of it is you can actually rotate the main buttons here. Now while these buttons are not micro switched, they are very responsive. And below this panel is a solid steel plate. So you get a really good feel to them and you can actually really hammer these buttons. And you won't get any... Uh, dead buttons at all thanks to the uh, steel plate underneath every single switch has its own auto fire option even the LNR triggers up here and you got to start and stack down here now just watch this this is actually excellent so um, we're going to switch on the auto fire for the A button now I'll try and zoom in here hopefully it will stay in focus let's get the stick in a little bit okay I should press the A button, you'll see the light blink and the little green light up here is blinking too. I don't know if you can see that. But as you turn up the speed of the auto fire, just watch the little red light. Oh yeah, it's going nuts. So how about that? Individual speeds for every single button on auto fire. Now you may have also noticed, oops, can't get off now, how do we get off? There you go, that's it, off. Now may, you may have also noticed this little compartment down here. Now, behind here is an expansion board. Um, I don't know what it was used for, it never seemed to uh, have any updates, so maybe they were planning to uh, connect this to a I don't know, um, arcade boards or whatever, who knows, but um, there's a little uh, expansion port there which, like I said, was never ever used. Okay, now the stick itself is actually very well made, it's very heavy, and uh, as you can see it's got this lovely sleek black top here, which is a fingerprint magnet unfortunately. Now there is one bad thing about this stick, and that's the placement of the L and R trigger buttons over here and over here. They are actually in a really stupid position. Um, luckily, uh, I play this. I use this stick with beat em ups, uh, you know, score and beat em ups, and SNK fighters. And thankfully, SNK fighters don't really use the LNR buttons, and I just shoot em ups or score and beat em ups, so I'm pretty much okay. But if you're a Street Fighter fan, maybe not the best stick for you. Um, the stick is actually quite heavy, and at the back, you can see it's got a solid steel plate, and this is a quality stuff. It is actually quite heavy this steel plate. In fact most of the weight of the joystick comes from this plate. And the shaft as well for the uh, actual stick is steel. So you know you can drag it everywhere but you're not going to get any uh, problems of a dead stick with that. So yeah if you're after a joystick for your Super Famicom I certainly do recommend picking up yourself the JB King joystick. And just for the party piece that's uh, got a bit of disco lights going. Here we go. Hey, okay. How about that for nuts? Tell you what, I have an epileptic fit playing this in the night. Okay, let's get back to that crap and on a Sonic Blast Man. Man, that's Sonic Blast Man is, eh? What?
<laughs> Our speech is bloody awful. Oh man. So anyway, here we go with the main game. Now, this differs quite differently from the original arcade game. The original arcade game, in case you didn't know, is one of those punching bag games. Basically what you had was a screen with graphics on. Um, pretty much uh, no better than this really, uh, graphic wise. And then um, what you did is you uh, were given a challenge, uh, you know, example, take out a planet or knock down a building and basically you just had to punch the punching bag as hard as you could to register some powerful uh, hits on whatever you were punching. If you hit it hard enough the thing fell down or exploded or you knocked somebody out. Simple as that really, but you can't really port that to the Super Famicom can you? So what did it do? Well the next best thing really, make it into a walk along beat em up. And what a shitty walk along beat em up they made it into. I did say uh, even using a good joystick can make this game uh, worthwhile playing, or at least make it good, but um, on second thoughts, no it can't. So as you can clearly see, it is very slow to move. Your character just sort of plods around the screen, as do the enemy uh, characters as well. Collision detection is also extremely bad. You can see that guy didn't hit me then, but I fell flat on my ass. Also, the AI cheats. You know, every time you go to do a flying kick, he'll knock you out of the sky before you can even touch him. Another thing that really annoys me about the game is when you kill somebody, instead of just dying straight away, they'll just lie on the floor as if they're going to come back to life and then make a, you know, the death runs or the death scream and uh, then die so you, you're waiting around thinking are you going to come back to life or not and you know sometimes you do sometimes you don't it's pretty annoying <laughs> graphically it's uh it's okay it's not too bad but um you can see the game tries to rip off like many other games for example these guys are certainly inspired by the uh, end of level boss on uh, streets of age one or burnable one And this stage here certainly reminds me of one from the Russian Beat series. Now Sonic Plasman himself certainly is a no sludge when it comes to moves. He can um, smack him in the face with a powerful punch, he can knock him up in the air with a powerful punch, he can fly kick them, grab the women by the hair and swing them from one side to the other, and grab pretty much anyone by the arms and just spin them around. Certainly is a bit of a badass when it comes to moves. Now you may be watching this video thinking, well actually this game looks quite good, well looks can be deceiving and they certainly are with this game. This game has no appeal whatsoever. Actually Sonic Blast Man 2 isn't that bad. The only problem is it's a lot of money. So anyway, earlier on I mentioned about the arcade game where you have like a punching bag and you have to smack it to um, make various things explode or whatever. Well those scenes have actually sort of made it into the Super Famicom game. Instead of punching a punching bag, you actually uh, shake the D-pad backwards and forwards and then hit the A button. See now this is uh, where in the arcade you'd be gearing up for the great big punch on the punch bag. But instead here you're just wobbling the D-pad backwards and forwards like a nutcase, giving yourself a nice blister on your thumb. Another thing I've noticed, even if um, you sort of fail like now, it still says congratulations. Hmm, very odd. I love my shoe mups. I think today we're gonna to play a weird one. This is Jainug. Or Gainug as I used to call it, but according to the katakana, it's Jainug. And as you can see from the back, it is one hell of a weird one. Weird looking game. Like what the hell is this meant to be? Don't know if you can see that in the reflection. I tell you what, let's take a look at the instruction manual. It's bloody weird. Now straight away from the first page you can see lots of weird art. That's actually one of the bosses in the game. Very weird stuff. And the weapons.
Gaiden system in Gainug or Jainug, or however you want to pronounce it, is actually quite basic. You know, you've got uh, three different types of shots. Uh, well, basically two if you ask me, because the gold one's the same as this one, but it does uh, half the weapon in reverse. Well, personally, I prefer the blue one. It gives you a wider range. Looks like pixel art, but I don't remember seeing that in the game. While you're playing the game, you've got these orbs which will surround you. Um, you can fire these up in any direction. And most of the power-ups have, well, not most, all the power-ups have three different levels. As you can see all the stages are quite varied, um, you know, you have some gothic church up here in, um, I don't know what that could be, somebody's stomach, who knows, um, out on the lakes there, very weird, and here's some of the crazy ass enemies you'll find in the game, mmm, oh, my man or hunter Yoko, actually the very first uh, animation of this is actually a hentai one, or porn, you want to call it that a soft core porn? Whereas the the follow up animations were not. The game of the Mega Drive, not to do with porn. Pretty decent game though. Anyway, let's take a look at Gainug or Gainug, or if you want to call it the American name Wings of War. And um, let's check it out on the old Mega Drive. Now one thing you'll notice straight away is the music, it's definitely got a bit of a military march to it. But that's not a bad thing, because even though the music is a bit strange, and it is an acquired taste, it does sort of fit the game rather well. What is a bit odd though is the choice of enemies. As you can see we were sort of uh, shooting what seemed to be... Uh, I don't know. Um, they look like um, Jewish guys and uh, Jewish stars. Uh, sorry, I'm not too sure what the star is actually called. And that's what that looks like to me. Very weird. And just look at this boss. What the hell is that meant to be? Certainly disturbing, that's for sure. Have you ever seen clouds with eyes? Yeah, maybe you have. Have you ever seen clouds with the eyes that vomit out of the eyes? I didn't think so. Now you have. This Messiah really do push the Mega Drive. As you can see, there's quite a lot going on at the moment, and there's absolutely no slowdown whatsoever. It's uh, pretty well done. It's programmed really well, this game. Throughout all the stages you'll be coming across some sort of weird out of place enemy such as these uh, Grim Reapers in what seems to be some sort of industrial stage with little guys pumping out rockets and um, 
distorted um, faces in terror popping about the ground shooting bullets at you it really is mad we haven't seen anything until you see the boss at the end of the stage the bosses in this game are extremely imaginative and the boss at this stage is probably one of the most uh, gruesome ones I've seen in the game in a long long time it's some sort of dismembered corpse throwing its heart out at you while half its uh, body is um, ran by a machine or also spits out red blood cells very odd and here we go with one of the most graphically impressive uh, levels I've seen on the Mega Drive you can probably scroll and go vertically and horizontally and loads of enemies coming at you at once and bullets everywhere and not hit and slow down it also makes things a hell of a lot harder to see Personally I really do enjoy this game but it may not be for everyone, as I said it is extremely difficult and I'm actually playing on easy at the moment believe it or not. Playing this game on normal is one hell of a challenge, it's like playing hard on most shoot mups. But for you are after a bit of a challenge and you really do like your shoots on the Mega Drive, you'd do a hell of a lot worse than buy this. If you go for the Japanese version, you've got to put a cheat in um, to get it to play on easy. Whereas the UK version or the European version and the American version titled Wings of War had easy already uh, available in the options screen. But you don't get the lovely artwork in the book if you buy the Western versions. So I do recommend you pick up the Japanese version. A little bit expensive these days, but not too bad. <laughs> 